Hi, everyone. My name is Jocelyn Medrick. I'm the executive director here at Great Marriages in Sheboygan. Tonight, we are going to have some fun with the five love languages. But before we do that, I just want to tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do here at Great Marriages in case this is your first event with us. Our mission here at Great Marriages is to prepare and strengthen relationships. So we work with singles, dating, engaged, and married couples. The second part of the mission is to enrich marriages. And we do that through our couple to couple mentoring program, our monthly events, our resource library, our lunch and learns, all kinds of different things that we offer to enrich your relationship or if you're married, enrich your marriage. The third part of our mission is to keep families together. So that is our ultimate goal. We want to keep your family healthy and together. The vision of our board of directors is a community of vibrant, strong, joyful, lifelong marriages. So this event tonight is one of the ways that we want to enrich your relationship. So this event tonight, uh, as I mentioned, is the five love languages that is based off this book, by Gary Chapman. We do have them here at Great Marriages in our resource library if you are interested in checking out the book after you listen this evening. So let's get started. Our goals for tonight, I have two of them for you, is to learn your own and your partner's love language. So that's the first thing we're going to do is to learn your love language. And the second one would be learning how to keep your love tanks Full. So if you learn to speak your love language, you're going to feel more loved. So we know that love is not just a feeling. It is a commitment, but it is also a feeling. So wouldn't you rather walk around feeling loved by your partner versus unloved? So that's what the love languages are all about, how you give and how you receive love. So uh, we have Tim Hawkins. If you've never heard Tim Hawkins, we have a little video by Tim. Uh, it's called Things You Don't Say to Your Wife. So this is, since I'm not a joke teller, here's a little comic relief before we head into our material. the choreography myself. Hey honey, have you gained some weight in your rear end? The dress you wear reminds me of my old girlfriend. And where'd you get those shoes? I think they're pretty lame. Would you stop talking cuz I'm trying to watch the game? If you're a man who wants to live a long and happy life, these are the things you don't say to your wife. I planned a hunting trip next week on your birthday. I didn't ask you, but I knew it'd be okay. I'll go make some dinner while I watch this fishing show. I taped it over our old wedding video. If you're a man who done that, a long and happy life, there's all the things you do to you. Solo. Okay. Your cooking is okay, but not like mother makes. The diamond in the ring I bought you is a fake. Your eyes look puffy, dear. Are you feeling ill? Happy anniversary, I bought you a treadmill. If <laughs> you're a man who wants to live a long and happy life, that too. These are the things you don't say to me. If you're a man who doesn't want to get killed with a knife, these are the things you don't say to me. Those are the things you don't want to say to your wife, but you know, let's get us laughing a little bit before we start. Uh, because again, it's all about feeling loved. That is what we're going to talk about tonight. 
Uh, the five love languages, as I mentioned, here is a picture of the book cover, uh, how to express heartfelt commitment to your mate. Uh, that is my husband and I there. And I just, when I looked at the picture, I was like, wow, look at all those clouds are over our head. And you know what? Sometimes that's the way marriage feels or relationships are work. You feel like, ah, oh, but it's all worth it. And you can learn how to have a healthier relationship. So two things I want you to think about, and you can pause this video and you can talk about this right now if you're watching with someone else. Otherwise, just take a moment to think about these two questions. When do you feel most love? So I'm not talking about being committed to somebody. I'm talking about that feeling of when do you feel most loved? So you can pause if you're with somebody and talk about this with each other. And the second question is, how do you give love to others? Because this is what the five love languages is all about. It's how do you feel loved and how do you give love to others? So pause and talk about that for a moment. And then when you're ready, come back and we are gonna go through each of the five love languages. So here is what the five love languages are. Words of affirmation, quality time, acts of service, physical touch, and receiving gifts. So before, when we would meet in person, we would give you this profile to fill out, figure out what your love language is. So we're gonna do that together tonight. Uh, pause and go grab a piece of paper and a pen for each of you because you are going to write as I go through the choices for you. So just pause for a second and come back and then we'll get started with the profile. All right, when you're back with your pen and your paper, I want you to write A, B, C, D, E with a line next to each one. Each set of questions that I'm gonna read will have two letters and you're just gonna put a tally mark next to the letter A, B, C, D, or E that is most meaningful to you. So I'm gonna read them. I'm not gonna stay long on each one because I want you to just quick pick the one that's the most meaningful to you and put a little tally mark next to the letter. Okay, so draw A, B, C, D, E with a line next to it. And then we're gonna roll into the questions. So which is more meaningful to you? A, I receive a loving note, text, email for no special reason from my loved one or E, my partner and I hug. Don't think about this too long. Pick the one, A or E, and put a little tally mark next to A or E. It's more meaningful to me when, B, I can spend time alone with my partner, just the two of us, or D, my partner does something practical to help me out. Which one means more to you? It is more meaningful to me when C, my partner gives me a little gift as a token of our love for each other. Or B, I get to spend uninterrupted leisure time with my partner. It's more meaningful to me when D, my partner unexpectedly does something for me like filling my car with gas or doing the laundry. Or E, my partner and I touch. It's more meaningful to me when E, my partner puts his or her arm around me when we're in public, or C, my partner surprises me with a gift. And there are 30 of these. So you're gonna make 30 different tally marks. Next, it's more meaningful to me when B, I'm around my partner even if we're really not doing anything, or E, I hold hands with my partner. It's more meaningful to me when C, my partner gives me a gift, or A, I hear I love you from my partner. It's more meaningful to me when E, I sit close to my partner, or A, I am complimented by my loved one for no apparent reason. You might find some that both of them like for this one, I like both of these, but you just pick the one that's more meaningful. Next, it's more meaningful to me when B, I get the chance to just hang out with my partner or C, I unexpectedly get small gifts from my partner.
It's more meaningful to me when A, I hear my partner tell me I'm proud of you, or D, my partner helps me with a task. It's more meaningful to me when B, I get to do things with my partner, or A, I hear supportive words from my partner. It's more meaningful to me when D, my partner does things for me instead of just talking about doing nice things, or E, I feel connected to my partner through a hug. It's more meaningful to me when A, I hear praise from my partner, or C, my partner gives me something that shows he or she was really thinking about me. It's more meaningful to me when B, I'm able to just be around my partner, or E, I get a back rub or a massage from my partner. It's more meaningful to me when A, my partner reacts positively to something I've accomplished, or D, my partner does something for me that I know they don't particularly enjoy. It's more meaningful to me when E, my partner and I kiss frequently, or B, I sense my partner is showing interest in the things I care about. It's more meaningful to me when D, my partner works on special projects with me that I have to complete, or C, my partner gives me an exciting gift. It's more meaningful to me when A, I am complimented by my partner on my appearance, or B, my partner takes the time to listen to me and really understand my feelings. It's more meaningful to me when E, my partner and I share non-sexual touch in public, or D, my partner offers to run errands for me. It's more meaningful to me when D, my partner does a bit more than his or her normal share of the responsibilities that we share around the house, et cetera. Or C, I get a gift that I know my partner put thought into choosing. It's more meaningful to me when B, my partner doesn't check his or her phone while we're talking, or D, my partner goes out of their way to do something that relieves pressure on me. Which one means more? Put the tally mark next to B or D. It's more meaningful to me when C, I can look forward to a holiday because of a gift I anticipate receiving, or A, I hear the words, I appreciate you from my partner. It's more meaningful to me when C, my partner brings me a little gift after he or she has been traveling without me, or D, my partner takes care of something I'm responsible to do, but I feel too stressed out to do it at that time. It's more meaningful to me when B, my partner doesn't interrupt me while I'm talking, or C, gift giving is an important part of our relationship. It's more meaningful to me when D, my partner helps me out when he or she knows I'm already tired, or B, I get to go somewhere while spending time with my partner. It's more meaningful to me when E, my partner and I are physically intimate, or C, my partner gives me a little gift that he or she picked up in the course of their normal day. It's more meaningful to me when A, my partner says something encouraging to me, or B, I get to spend time in a shared activity or hobby with my partner. It's more meaningful to me when C, my partner surprises me with a small token of their appreciation, or E, my partner and I touch a lot during the normal course of the day, non-sexual. It's more meaningful to me when D, my partner helps me out, especially if I know they're already busy, or A, 
I hear my partner specifically tell me, I appreciate you. It's more meaningful to me when E, my partner and I embrace after we've been apart for a while, or A, I hear my partner say how much I mean to him or her. Okay, so that was all 30 of them. So you should have tally marks next to A, B, C, D, or E. Now I want you to add the words, words of affirmation next to A, quality time next to B, receiving gifts next to C, acts of service next to D, and physical touch next to E. So add up your tally marks and put an actual number. Like if you had nine tally marks, write the number nine next to words of affirmation. So go through so you can see which number is the highest. So I'm just gonna give you a second to tally up your tally marks and write the number there. And something that you can do later is go back and look how each of you answer the questions. So this will give you some great insight into your partner if you're seeing which ones they chose. So it would be great, you know, you can restart this and actually we will email you an actual profile afterwards. Um, there's some other things we're gonna be emailing you after the event. So we'll just include a profile. So then you can go through and you know, circle the ones again, or just talk through the questions. So hopefully that's enough time to tally up your love languages and see which one is your primary. So which love language received the highest score? That is your primary love language. If you have two that are equal, you're bilingual. You have two primary love languages. Then you might have a secondary language. So you might have one score that's pretty close to your primary score. They, that means that they're both expressions of love that are important to you. Okay, so I'm just gonna read you something that Gary Chapman wrote about interpreting your scores. He says, the highest score indicates your primary love language. The highest score is 12. It's not uncommon to have two high scores, although one language does have a slight edge for most people. That just means two languages are important to you. The lower scores indicate those languages you seldom use to communicate love and that probably don't affect you very much on an emotional level. You may have scored more highly on certain love languages than others, but do not dismiss those other languages as insignificant. Your loved one may express love in those ways and it will be helpful to you to understand this about him or her. Okay, so as we go through now, we're gonna describe each love language in a little bit more detail. Think about what your partner is. So maybe even switch sheets with them um, so you can see what theirs are because I really want you to be thinking about your loved ones while you're doing this. And if you're single or you're dating or you're engaged, you could still do this. Um, if you're single and you don't have a partner right now, that's okay. You can use this for your family, for your friends. Um, if you have children, this all works together on how to give and receive love to anyone, really. So let's start with words of affirmation. This is the first love language. So words of affirmation people like verbal compliments. So, oh, you look sharp in that suit, or oh, you look so beautiful in that dress, honey. Or you might start a phrase with, I appreciate that you, and then fill in the blank. Um, because words of affirmation people, as it says in the title, they need your positive words. Another thing is that words people need encouraging words. You're the best. You can do it. Yay, honey. You know, encouraging words. Be like a cheerleader for that person. Also, kind words and humble words. Be nice make requests, not demands. Sometimes words of affirmation people can be sensitive to, well, obviously everything here, they need encouraging words, they need kind words, humble words, sensitive to that negativity uh, when you're speaking to one another. The bottom line is that words people want to feel appreciated. Now we all want to feel appreciated. Yes, I understand that. But if your loved one or you yourself 
are high in words of affirmation, it probably means a lot to you and makes you feel loved if you feel appreciated. So if you want right now, just since this is a online video, you can pause and you can talk to each other about your ideas. So if one of you is high in words of affirmation, please pause and talk to each other about what makes you feel loved. It might not be the examples we have here, but tell your loved one because they need to know. Um, we're not mind readers. If we're a words person, you might think that everybody thinks the same as you, but they don't if they have a different love language. So this is really important that you pause and you talk to each other. If you're the words person say, oh, these are the words that you say that really make me feel loved. Or these are the words you say that don't make me feel loved so they can stop doing that as well. Um, then come back and we're going to just go through, how do you speak this language? So once, I don't know if it's every week, Gary Chapman sends an email out with real life examples of how to speak the different languages. So I've got just three examples for you. Uh, if you're a words of affirmation person, maybe you can relate to these. And if you're watching with the words of affirmation person, then listen carefully because you may get some ideas to help them. So here's one. We don't get to see each other very often during the week because of work schedules. During the week, I'll randomly send a quote that describes how I feel about him and or our relationship. Just a nice reminder that I'm thinking of him and how much he means to you. Means to me, sorry. And that was from a woman named Jenny. So Jenny does something nice for him. She just sends him a quote and says, this is how I feel about you or our relationship. Another one by a gentleman named Jeff says, my wife and I recap every day with a top and bottom three. These range from funniest moments, emotions, anticipations, songs, et cetera, and bring up endless discussions with both of our perspectives, helping us learn each other's love language further. So how fun is that? You could put into practice the top and bottom three, just like this couple does. And the last one is from a woman named Leslie. She says, around Valentine's Day, I hid conversation hearts candy all over my boyfriend's house. In the fridge, I put one that said, you're cool, and hey handsome, one on the bathroom mirror, one that said you're sweet uh, with his other candy and you and me, one by a picture of us and another that said I love you on his nightstand. They surprised him for the next few days and he still talks and laughs about it years later. So how fun is that? We just had Valentine's Day. I actually have some of those little foam hearts. So if those don't go bad and, and it would be okay if they didn't find them right away. So there's some ideas on how to speak words of affirmation. And I just like this quote that I saw, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will always hurt me. It's the opposite of that phrase we said when we were little. Um, words of affirmation people can be very hurt by your words. So just guard what you say and try to make it positive and appreciative. Next up is quality time. So giving someone your undivided focused attention your time. So this doesn't mean sitting on the couch together, watching a football game, and nobody's talking to each other. Okay, that's not quality time to a quality time person. That is just time. Okay, quality time, you're focusing your attention on that person. It's having quality conversations, you're sharing experiences, you're sharing your thoughts, your desires, your feelings, talk about your dreams. We have an event coming up in July about planning for retirement together. And it's all about your dreams and how you can um, relationally plan for retirement. So that's an example of a quality thing that you could do together. And quality activities. So you these these quality time people, they want to experience something together. They want to feel like you care about them. So that's important that if you're planning a date or an outing and you have a quality time spouse or loved one, think about things that you can experience together that will make them feel like you care about them, that you put a lot of thought into it. And again, what are your ideas? So if you, either of you came out high in quality time, I want you to pause the video and I want you to talk about this. What does the quality time person say about what makes them feel loved and listen, okay? 
and then come back and we're going to go through how to speak quality time. Okay. So here's some more real life examples. The first one is from Regina. She says, my significant other, a retired army officer and I, an active duty army warrant officer, love to cook. So we've got a military family here. It doesn't matter what it is. Once we discuss the meal and who's going to cook what, it's date night in the kitchen. Sometimes we have our favorite genre of music playing with a glass of wine during preparation. This allows us to have quality time together when we share time cooking together. So if you like to cook or if you don't like to cook, um, plan a meal together. There's a whole process here. You can plan the meal, you can go shopping for the food, and then you can come back and prep everything and then make the meal together and just make it fun. Um, the next one, plan a picnic with your loved one and choose a theme like their favorite foods of all time, only maybe finger foods or foods that are a certain color. Choose a location to go with your theme and create a fun new memory together. So these are some ideas of how you can spend time together. Sandra says, try planning a date night featuring a picnic at home themed around a place where you have or would like to visit. Set the mood with a few decorations, add in some of his or her favorite foods and beverages from that location, play or dance to some related music, and of course, have some great conversation. So that's why this is under quality time is that you can then have some quality conversation. Last one, Sharice says, when quarantine began, we created a date jar with different activities like playing with Legos, doing couples yoga, or having a fashion show at home. Each week we pulled a card and did whatever it said. We're now creating a photo album with the memories from each date. So, you know, we're in this strange time still where the pandemic is still out there. We're able to do a few more things, but we're still kind of spending a lot of time at home. So some of those ideas were great. You know, make a picnic, pick a theme, pick a location. That's all really, really fun to spend quality time together. Next one is acts of service. So you can kind of get from the title what this one might be. It's doing things you know your significant other would like you to do. So read that one more time. Doing things you know your significant other would like you to do. It's not doing things that you like to do. It might be something that you don't like to do at all. Uh, so that's okay. That's all about loving and caring for someone is doing things for them, not for yourself. And I put the word us there in quotes. Um, there's a speaker that we've had in the past that talks about us being in the house. And when us is in the house, it means that you are putting that other person first above your own needs and wants. You're gonna please an acts of service person by serving them, okay? You're gonna do things for them. You're expressing your love by doing things for them. So what are some of your ideas? If either of you has high acts of service numbers, please pause and talk about this. Talk about what things that you do for each other that make you feel loved. Maybe it's doing the dishes. Personally, I do not like dishes in my sink. And when I come home and I haven't been home all day and there's full of dishes, that doesn't make me so happy. So talk about that. Talk about, oh, when you do the dishes when I'm at work and I come home, oh, it makes me feel so good that you did that for me. Or maybe it's mowing the lawn. Maybe he always mows the lawn and you go out there and mow it for him. So there's lots of different things that, that you could do for one another. So just take a moment and talk about that if you're high in acts of service. Then we're gonna talk about how to speak it. Here's some of those examples. I've got three of them for acts of service. Rita says, my husband's love language is acts of service. He's a truck driver and is gone more than he is home. So when he comes home, I get all of his laundry done and I try to fix his favorite foods. Even though there are honeydews he has to take care of, I still mostly try to just let him relax. So very sweet. Cooks what he likes, has it ready for him, and then just wants him to relax. Jeff says, my wife and I have opposite work schedules at times. Days when I'm working nights give me the opportunity to be with her during her lunch break. We are blessed that she works only 10 minutes away from our house. When she arrives home for lunch, I have food ready. 
And Danea says, if I know he needs help at a job site and nobody's available to help, I will gladly go with him and do anything I can to help. It makes me feel good that we can work together. I make sure to bring him water for when he needs it. And I also hold an umbrella to block the sun from burning him since it's extremely hot in Tucson, Arizona. Isn't that sweet? Can you just see her like, makes me tear up a little, holding a little umbrella over her husband as he works in the hot sun. That is just so sweet. So next one is receiving gifts. So gifts can be visual symbols of love. Physical presence can be a gift, especially in a time of crisis. If you're giving the gift of your time to somebody, if you're super busy and your partner knows that, giving them your time can actually be a big gift to them. This does not have to be expensive. Um, Gary Chapman, I just heard him speak a couple weeks ago and he was talking about how one gentleman, they, he went on a walk by himself and he, he saw a feather on the ground. So he picked up the feather, he brought it to his wife and he's like, honey, you're the wind beneath my wings. So totally corny, but I'm sure she actually probably saved that feather and probably looks at it and thinks about what he said. So you don't have to buy something expensive, pick a flower, you know, while you're on your walk, think of things that mean something to you, get a little rock, paint something on it. I mean, there are things you can do that don't cost any money at all. And now your ideas. So if you or your loved one are high in receiving gifts on your tally marks, take a pause here and talk about the things that have meant the most to you. Maybe there's a gift that stands out to you and you can tell them about it right now because maybe they didn't even know how much it meant to you. So just take a couple minutes and talk about that and then come back and we'll go through how to speak this language. All right, some receiving gift ideas. Ashley says, I recently hand wrote the lyrics of a song that is special to my relationship and left the note as a surprise for my boyfriend. He absolutely loved it. Knowing that I took the time to make something by hand meant a lot to him. And now he has that special reminder of how much I love him and miss him when we are apart. Amy says, I went to the store and bought my friend, so this isn't about a loved one, brought my friend her favorite candy. When I told her I had a surprise for her, she said, I sure hope it's a good one. I said, only the best. She loves being surprised with random gifts. It's fun to give a surprise gift just because you can, even better when it's not Christmas or a birthday gift. So how fun is that? You can even put these into practice with your friends. Lily says, turn cute or funny things your loved ones say into a custom t-shirt or a similar service. No, custom t-shirt using custom ink or a similar service. It's a nice gift to show you're proud of them and you pay attention to them. If you get matching t-shirts for the both of you, bonus. And the last one is from Susan. My husband leaves for work before me. Sometimes when I leave for work, I find a flower he has picked from our garden on my seat or dashboard. He didn't spend any money on it, but he took time to tell me in his own way that he was thinking of me. I put it in a small vase on my desk so I can see it all day at work. It makes me smile inside and out. Very, very sweet. Physical touch is the next love language. So with physical touch, you need to learn what your partner perceives as loving touch. So what we mean by this is some people have had trauma in their backgrounds. Maybe there was abuse. Maybe there was something terrible that happened to them. So you want to be sensitive to that and you want to talk about those things and you want to ask them what they perceive as a loving touch. And the longer you're together, you're going to get to know these things. This does not need to mean sexual touch. So when we say physical touch, it doesn't necessarily mean being intimate with one another. It can be you put your hand on her back, you hug him, you kiss each other. Just being close is what this physical touch is all about. And I have physical touch as a high love language. So I like my husband to sit right next to me. I like him to be right next to me, um, those types of things. Now, what are your ideas? So pause 
And if you are high in physical touch, take a few moments to talk about this. Maybe you've never talked about what you each perceive as a loving touch. Take this opportunity to do it and listen. If you're the one that doesn't have the high physical touch, listen to what the other person is saying. And then we'll come back and we'll do the how to speak it. All right, some examples of physical touch for you. Lindsay says, my husband and I go to bed at different times. So cuddling as we go to sleep can be difficult, though it really helps fill my love tank. It made me sad at first, but then I realized that my husband's praying with me and holding me for a few minutes as I prepare for bed still makes me feel full. So he's able to finish what he needs to do, shower, et cetera, while I go to sleep feeling better. So they found a way, even though they don't go to bed together, he still comes and just snuggles with her for a few minutes. That's so sweet. Let yourself be happy and silly with your spouse and use that energy to spark natural physical touch. Even if this is uncomfortable for you, you will grow in your ability to speak this language as you let the moments of physical touch happen naturally. Jeff says, my wife and I use certain essential oils for various reasons. One thing I enjoy is mixing Epsom salt with different essential oils to create a foot soak. I enjoy surprising my wife with one of these prepped foot soaks followed by a massage of her feet and lower legs while she gets to relax with her favorite drink. So that sounds nice. And the last one, Deborah says, my best friend and I used to hug all the time. Now, because of COVID-19, we have special elbow, knee, foot handshakes so we can feel physically connected. It serves the purpose and also makes us laugh. So again, this doesn't just have to be for a romantic partner. You can put these into practice with your friends as well. All right, so once you discover your partner's love language, you can keep their love tank full on a regular basis. So that's the goal here. Learn each other's love language and then keep each other's love tank full. And maybe you can even use that love tank phrase with one another moving forward. If you aren't feeling so loved, maybe you can just say, my love tank's feeling a little empty right now. What can we do to fix that? And you can use that to help each other understand that you have a need. So sometimes people ask, what if my loved one's language does not come naturally to me? Okay, so this can happen if you're really high in physical touch and your partner has physical touch as their bottom love language, it's going to be more difficult to speak, speak that language to each other. So what Gary Chapman says, I've got the book here, um, he talks about the power of choosing to love. So basically, he says that his wife's love language is acts of service. One of the things he says I do for her regularly is to vacuum the floors. Do you think that vacuuming the floors comes naturally to me? My mother used to make me vacuum. All through junior high and high school, I couldn't go play ball on Saturday until I finished vacuuming the entire house. In those days, I said to myself, when I get out of here, one thing I'm not going to do is vacuum houses. I'll get myself a wife to do that. Oh, yeah. But he says, I vacuum our house now and I vacuum it regularly. There's only one reason I vacuum our house, love. You couldn't pay me enough to vacuum a house, but I do it for love. You see, when an action doesn't come naturally to you, it's a greater expression of love. So now that you know these love languages, you're gonna know that it's even harder for your partner sometimes to do what you need if it's not their love language. So when they do it, it shows you how much they love you. So just think about that, okay? If you're opposites, then it's going to take a little more effort and it's not going to be as easy, but do what doesn't come naturally to you and choose to love that person in the way that they need to be loved, not the way that you need to be loved. And if you both have similar love languages, that's great. It's gonna be easier for you. It might not still be the same, um, when I heard Gary Chapman speak a few weeks ago, he was talking about you could have the same love language, but have different dialects that you speak. He kind of describes it as, you know, different accents and dialects within a language. Same thing here with the love language. It might not be exactly the same, but things that make you feel loved. So just keep that in mind. This is super important. 
be selfless, we talked about this already, and think of others first. Okay, let those two things soak in. Be selfless means you're putting the other person first. Sometimes you don't want to, but if you want them to feel loved, this is what we need to do. So we have a little quiz for you. Um, you can just shout out the answers at home to each other. But it, uh, which of the love languages would enjoy doing the following? So kayaking, shout out your answer. We believe this is quality time. A walk or a hike. Now this could be a trick question because there's actually two of them. Physical touch, you can see there, all of them are touching each other, holding hands or arms around each other and quality time. Flowers would be what? Receiving gifts. You come home and the house is clean, the dishes are done, the lawn is mowed. Which one would that be? Acts of service. And you find a thank you note or you are told that you are appreciated. That's our words, people, our words of affirmation. So this chart here, we're going to, this is one of the other things we're going to email you afterwards. Uh, which love language? So there's three columns, how to communicate, actions to take, and things to avoid. I actually think the things to avoid column, it might be the most important on here. So if your loved one is a words of affirmation, go to that things to avoid. It says non-constructive criticism, not recognizing or appreciating effort. So that, that column is going to help you uh, communicate better. So we'll send you this um, afterwards, after the event. Well, you can't ask me any questions, so we're going to skip that slide. Um, we're going to shift here to just talk about dating, because even if you're married, you still should be dating your spouse. So how many of you regularly go on dates? That is the question. Before we get into how to plan a great date using the love language, let's just talk about a couple things not to do. Don't bring up the past or an unresolved issue. If you finally get out on a date, you don't want to be arguing the whole date. Put your cell phone away. Like, don't pull it out. Don't start answering emails or text messages. Now, if you have children, you might need to have your cell phone out, but don't be checking Facebook or looking at your phone. You just look around. You know, when we can start to go out to eat again, or if you've started that, you'll see people just sitting there on their phones and they're not even looking or talking to each other. So don't let that be you from now on. Don't let your eyes wander around the room instead of looking at your loved one. Okay, so. How do you put together a, a great date keeping the love languages in mind? We're just going to give 10 ideas of some dates that you can do during this time of COVID when we're still restricted. Some people might be going out, some people might not. So we're going to try to give you ideas that don't have to do with going out in, you know, into public too much. So. How many of you have been binge watching on Netflix the past year? I've watched some great series and I was totally in love with The Karate Kid, my confession. I used to watch the movie every day, literally every day after school for months. So I can pretty much recite the whole original Karate Kid movie. So now I was very excited when Netflix brought out Cobra Kai. So that was one of my binges. So you could binge watch a show together, order a pizza. So you can do this right from home. Hiking at Terry Andre. So now it's starting to get a little warmer. We're into March and you could go and walk the trail there or walk the beach together and it doesn't cost a thing and you can stay away from people as well. You could get takeout from a local restaurant. We want to be supporting our local restaurants, especially now since a lot of them are struggling. So go grab some takeout and have a picnic dinner in your living room or go down to the beach. We've got lots of great beaches in Sheboygan County. And then maybe you can have a little dance or a little romance afterwards. 
Number four, create a scavenger hunt. So for all you creative artsy people out there, you could do this inside your house. I think one of the examples um, might have even been about that. Uh, make up clues and then make a list of items to find. So maybe if you have a gifts person that is your loved one, do this and have a little gift at the end. Like we already mentioned, it doesn't have to be anything expensive, could be something that you made for them. Number five, sledding, ice skating, ice fishing. We might be coming to the end. I know this is rolling out towards the end of March, so maybe these things aren't gonna be available then, but you can keep them in mind uh, for next winter. Uh, always fun to just go sledding or skating or ice fishing. Watch an online concert. So there's been lots of these happening since COVID. You could probably just go on YouTube and ask for a virtual concert. So if you're music people, you love music, go ahead and just search for something that you can watch. And we talked about this already and it was in some of our examples. A fun thing to do would just be to cook a meal together to do the planning, the shopping, and then cook it and enjoy it together. Number eight, travel. This is opening up north, so maybe you could take a weekend getaway where you drive if you don't feel comfortable flying, or if you do, you know, just get away for a few days. Everyone's just been stuck inside for so long. Um, it's just nice to take a little break with your loved one. Number nine, of course, is Great Marriages Events. Um, you can go to great-marriages.org slash events. You see the website there to see what we have coming up. So this event rolls out March 20th. We've got events coming up every single month. So our first in-person thing that we're planning to do is our annual fundraiser, which this year we're having Mark Gunger, so fun, and his wife Deanna come for our entertainment. So that is on May 18th. After May, then we start hopefully um, with our in-person events, keeping them in person. So go to our website and check that out. Um, we do have several online events still coming up as well, which will all be free and just like this one. And number 10 is to write a love letter. Now we are also going to send you a template for a love letter and some instructions. If you've never written a love letter, that's okay, but we'll send you a sheet that gives you some guidance in how to do that. So do this for your loved ones. When people come to our event, we make you do this right at your table and seal it in an envelope and give it to your partner to read later. And some people have said, that's the only love letter I've ever gotten from him or her. So please try this. Even if it's not something that you're super comfortable doing, um, I think your loved one will really appreciate it. So what are your ideas? So you can pause again and talk about your most memorable date ever. We usually have people share when we're in person. Uh, what did you do on one of your most memorable dates? Why do you consider this one of your best dates? And what were you thinking and feeling at the time? So the pictures here are my husband and I. Um, this might, I don't remember which year this was. We go to Marco Island. Um, we went there for our honeymoon and we've gone back every year since. So we usually do a little sailing. And then the picture that I'm kind of blocking was like, uh, that's called the Marco Princess. And it's a dinner, sunset dinner cruise. Um, so that was something really fun that I loved so much. So think about this pause and talk about this with one another. Don't miss these opportunities. Don't say, oh, we'll go, we'll talk about that later because you probably won't. So just pause the video and talk about this for a couple minutes. All right, so last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zip through a few of the resources that we love here at Great Marriages. Uh, one of them is Love and Respect by Emerson and Sarah Egrich. So I am also doing a recorded event about Love and Respect that is going to roll out April 24th, I believe. So check the events page and sign up for that one because what an important topic. Um, typically, females need more love and males desire respect. So come and learn with us all about this concept of love and respect. I mentioned Mark Gunker is coming for our annual fundraiser on May 18th. He has a resource called the Flag Page and this book that goes along with it. It's a wonderful resource to learn what motivates your loved one. 
So you can go to flagpage.com for that. Shanti Feldhahn, we love Shanti and her husband, Jeff. Um, we just did an event called Thriving in Love and Money, which is on our resources page. If you missed that, I would highly recommend going back and watching that one. But she's got all kinds of books in our library. If you are a blended family, you have a step family, we've got some great resources with Ron Deal. Ron Deal is kind of the step family guru. Um, he's got the Smart Step Family series. So we have all of his books here in our resource library. Start Smart Step Family, Smart Step Family Marriage, Smart Step Mom, Smart Step Dad, all of them. So they are an amazing resource. If you're engaged or you're dating someone who has their own children that are not yours, please, please read the Smart Step Family before you decide to get married. It's really great information and very eye-opening. The other resource is called Restored and Remarried, which is by Gil and Brenda Stewart. They have been here twice for events in the past. And it's also wonderful information for someone who has been remarried. And then of course, the Great Marriages Mentoring Program. I mentioned it in the very beginning. Uh, what the mentoring program is, is we have you take an online assessment with our curriculum provider, Prepare and Enrich, you see it there. And then we pair you up with one of our mentor couples who will work with you anywhere from eight to 10 weeks if you're premarital or you are experiencing a time of crisis in your marriage. Here's a few quotes that you can read um, from people who went through the mentoring program. Uh, the only cost for the mentoring program is $35 for the online assessment through Prepare and Enrich, and then the mentoring sessions are free. So, we will email you the colorful chart. We're also going to email you an evaluation, which was probably attached to your original email. It's really important that you fill out that evaluation for us. Just tell us, do you like these kind of online events like this? Would you rather be in person? What could we improve on it? What did you like? What did you not like? All that information is very valuable to us. So please fill out the evaluation. It's going to be online um, and they are anonymous. So you can just click on the link and fill out the evaluation for us. So thank you so much for joining us. And we just want to say happy dating to you. And we hope that, I hope that you learned something and that you will put into practice the love languages. So we hope to see you at another event. And like it said, happy dating. <laughs>